for a conversation produced by our underwriter, Microsoft, about the Frontier Firm, how AI is reshaping the enterprise. Please welcome Jared Spitaro, Chief Marketing Officer of AI at Work at Microsoft, with The Atlantic's Nicholas Thompson. All right, welcome, Jared. It's lovely to be here with you again. Great to be here this year. I hope you enjoyed that conversation just now about whether you'll be nationalized. All right. <laughs> Indeed. So last year, we sat here, we talked a lot about the future of AI and the future of work, and you were pretty bullish, and you said we're entering an agent, an era of agents, and a lot of great things are going to happen. Have they happened? Yes, we've seen the emergence of what we call the frontier firm, which is human-led, agent-operated. It kind of buys intelligence like electricity, puts it to work like a human, and then compounds it like interest. So we, we definitely see it coming. It comes from the startups right now more than going concerns. Wait, so a frontier firm is combining humans plus agents. Exactly right. But are you seeing that in established large market cap firms? For sure, yeah, in pockets, I would say. There's okay. a lot of, lot of inertia in established firms. Right. There have been a lot of studies that have come out recently that say it's a little bit slower than one might expect. AI adoption, you're seeing a little less impact on the bottom line. Tell me where you're seeing real effects on the P&L. Well, the biggest effects happen in the P&L when you have a leader who decides to take away operating expense and says, I'm going to take $100 million out of your budget. I'm going to give you some budget for some agents and make it happen. We absolutely see with our clients today people doing exactly that. That's the formula. So the formula is you identify some task that you think can be done by agents, you move the humans, you remove the humans, you have the agents do it. What are those tasks that agents can do effectively and you know, with the proper amount of veracity? Think about this. Um, the big idea here is that agents essentially have taken the marginal cost of expertise to zero. So you're looking for places that require typically deep expertise applied in a structured way. So there's some sort of structure to it. You see it in places like, for instance, customer support. You see it in places like legal work. You see it in places like marketing where there are good measures for what's happening and you can insert agents into the process. So square your enthusiasm with the recent study that came out of MIT that said only, you know, 5% of companies are, you know, seeing a real effect on their P&L. Yeah, I would just say that it's early days for us yeah. still, for sure, that it's in pockets. Um, really, if you want to see what it's doing, you go to these frontier firms that are startups. Those folks are organized totally different than the going concern. And the, the measure, Nick, is yeah. revenue per employee. That's what you're looking at is how many employees do you have and what are you producing per human. So this reminds me of one of the very interesting things you said to me is a year ago, two years ago, maybe at dinner, where you said the key thing to watch will be whether in industries large companies are disrupted by competitors who use AI better than them or by AI native firms that figure out what their figure out the industry entirely from scratch using AI. It sounds like frontier firms are in the second category. Yes. Is that what you're seeing and is that what you expect? Do you expect large companies, large market caps, lots of employees to be beaten by startups with lots of agents? In some cases, but I'll say this. The analog that you could look at, one that's an example, would be the internet. You certainly saw places where startups totally disrupted the incumbents, but you saw other places where the incumbents adapted to what was happening yeah. and they were able to change. So it's not like one formula, but we're seeing both patterns. You can have out. a startup frontier firm and you can have an established company, I don't know, like say a magazine founded in 1857 that figures out the right AI <laughs> strategy and is able to Perhaps survive Perhaps that magazine could do it. That's exactly right. Oh, thank you very much. Now we can move to the next question. Um, <laughs> There was another really interesting study that came out by um, economists mostly at Stanford and was about the effect on employment. And they looked at payments data. Mm -hmm. So it wasn't just surveys. It wasn't just mm -hmm. guessing. It was actual numbers. And what they found is that in companies that are close to AI and that use AI, they're not employing a lot of, they're not hiring a lot of 20 to 26 year olds. The old people are doing awesome, right? And even in those companies, they're hiring more of us. But the young people are having a hard time. Is this an indicator that AI is knocking out the first few rungs of the job ladder? Here's the pattern that I see. The pattern actually is that what companies want now, when you start to have what we would call human agent teams, they want people who can come into the workforce and who can start to produce like what we would consider to be a mid-career professional. And they're not finding those graduates coming out. So is there a shift in what they're going to hire? Yes, but that doesn't mean that we won't hire 21, 22-year-old graduates. It means that educational institutions need to change how they're training people. 
because somebody comes out of college right now and they have all of this book knowledge, but they don't have Correct. the right company we, knowledge? You know, today, the way it works is we're going to give you 10, 10 years to figure out your craft, learn how to actually manage resources and people, and okay, now you can do something at scale. Tomorrow, the way it's going to work is human agent teams are going to give these brand new college graduates essentially scale at their fingertips, expertise at their fingertips. Wait, so this is pretty interesting. So it suggests that right now, you know, we don't want to hire young college graduates because the tasks they're going to have to manage, all these agents, they're going to have to figure out how to you know, work in this complicated world. We'll give that to the employees who are already there. A college graduate who is prepared to do this and knows how to manage AI teams because they've learned that would be much better than, say, someone like me, right? Oh, I think they just put you in a dead heat and see who does better. I right. Know. <laughs> but, like, so, but it does mean that this problem that everybody is foreseeing and saying, oh, my God, it's going to be so rough for the 20-somethings, it's not a function of the job market, it's really a function of the preparation. Correct, I, I, didn't, you know, I have a whole bunch of kids in the, in the 20-somethings right now, so they ask me this all the time. Are and they employed? I, they are employed, uh, everyone but one, but we don't talk about <laughs> him right now, he lives at home. Um, but you know, I would just say it is changing, and it's important to recognize the patterns that are emerging and to prepare for that world. Maybe I'll say one other thing, Nick. The single biggest change is that adaptation, your ability to learn and adapt, will be a huge differentiator because the clock speed has essentially gone, you know, turned faster than it's ever been before. Right. This is, this is something I've believed since the very beginning of AI. Like, if there's one skill to cultivate, is the skill of adapting, changing, For sure. and rolling no, with it. No doubt about it. All right. So now you're, you're hired, you're president of some giant university. How do you change the curriculum to make kids more ready for this world? Well, the best thing to do is project out and say, what's this frontier firm? What's it look like? Again, it's human-led, agent-operated. And to say, what type of people will that firm want to, want to employ? And the type of people that it'll want to employ is those who can use agents for a fraction of the cost to essentially kind of replicate what today requires human-human teams, human-operated processes, and really drive the business faster. So humans will continue to be the driving force of business, but operating and managing and overseeing and leading these agents will be an important way to scale. Why would you want agents to replicate? Like, why would, why would you say, hey, let's have a bunch in a frontier firm? Why would yeah. someone in a frontier firm say, you know what, let's just have agents and let's do what humans do now and let's do it more efficiently? Why wouldn't they say, we have this slightly new form of being, agents, let's do something entirely new. That's, that's the third pattern. You see that essentially rewiring the business as you think about, well, all of a sudden we can do something that we've never been able to do before. What should we do? But the reality is the phases are moving kind of first. What can you do more efficiently with the going concern that you have if you're starting there? And how long until this, like, how many people, we'll just show hands, how many people here currently employ agents in some form in their firm? All right, so we have maybe one out of 20. How long until it's one out of two? My um, guess is probably about 30, 24 to 36 months. It'll be one out of two. Yeah. Wow. So all, basically all large companies will be employing agents and moving ahead in that way. Wow. Absolutely. Yeah. All right, so we've talked a little bit about how universities need to change. How should young people, my 11-year-old son and 13-year-old nephew, are somewhere in this audience. Uh, there they are. They're right there in the center. <laughs> they are. Um, the Atlantic Festival was worth uh, missing school, maybe not worth missing soccer practice. Um, <laughs> But they're here, Priorities. they've been watching, they've been enjoying. What should they be thinking? When you think about not just college kids who need to come out with the skills of AI, but what about when you think about like teens and tweens? Yeah, totally. Here, here's what I would say to these two young aspiring men. I would say first, you have to learn how to think. And what I mean by that is not just analytical thinking, but learn how to use AI as a thought partner, not just a tool. Then second, learn how to learn. These things can increase the speed with which we can learn new things, languages, domains, et cetera. And then finally, we'll go back to that adaptation. Learn how to use them to actually quickly adapt to changing circumstances. Those kind of basic skills, though they sound basic, they aren't kind of general population skills, and AI is going to be important to changing the way we do things. That's a, you know, the last time I asked a question like this, I was at an event with, a, with an AI professor who believes that uh, AI is going to wipe us out. And I asked him what, I was with my 17-year-old son, and I said, what should my 17-year-old son study? He said, just go to a party school, because you're all cooked. <laughs> um, <laughs> do, you, <laughs> do you have a theory for the hierarchy with which industries will change? Like, one thing that I've heard is that the closer you are to the training of AI, so computer science, media, it sort of branches outwards from that. Do you have a hypothesis for how industries will change in this agentic world? Well, I'll tell you what's happening, and then I do have a hypothesis. What's happening right now is that when we look at um, the companies that are changing the most, they have to do essentially with computer programming. So you had some worries about your own, but I have 
questions about my own business. So, right. you know, you think about software and the development of software, that is being impacted the most by far. There are measures of that. Then we would just simply say that kind of knowledge work, the type of things that we thought people could only do, creativity, you know, taking information and analyzing it, those will all be changed. And maybe the, the thing I'll say to answer is the biggest invention, I believe the biggest invention we have here is actually a pattern recognition engine. It recognizes patterns in big, big, big data sets and yeah. can apply them in different places. Watch for that being kind of a spark of innovation. Makes a lot of sense. Very last question since we're almost out of time. What is one prediction you have about AI at work that we'll see in the next year? I guarantee you that every company out there is going to find, if they're willing to do this experiment, that a human agent team will outperform a human human team in core parts of their business on really important measures. Things like cost, things like speed, and things like overall quality within the next year. Within the next year? Uh -huh. All right, we're gonna challenge that assumption, uh, and I'll ask you about it next year. Thank Fantastic. you so much, Jared, so much yeah. fun. Always a pleasure. Thank you.